The house of prayer is open and God is in control. We are excited to invite you to Rivers Chicago online worship experience. I am Pastor Robert. And I am Pastor Desiree Anderson. Rivers, the place of life and love, is here to serve you. Get your family members and share, 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 and start those watch parties. Our senior leader, Apostle Stephen Garner, will inspire us with the Sunday series, Mountain Dwellers. Get ready for worship. Get ready for visitation. Get ready for a divine encounter. It's It's time time for for church. church. Sing to the hill of the Lord. Yeah, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall ascend to the hill of the L
where I find my meat, where I find my reason, where I find provision, where I find my hope, where I find my destiny, where I find my purpose, where I find my thirst, and my hunger is quenched. Oh, my hunger, all of my thirst, it allows me to ascend to you. see those with clean hands and a pure heart will see those with clean hands and a pure heart will see those with clean hands and a pure heart will see those with clean hands and a pure heart will see those with clean hands and a pure heart will see those with clean hands and a pure heart to see those with clean hands and a pure heart to see those with clean Those with clean hands and a pure heart will see. Those with clean hands and a pure heart. Those with clean hands and a pure heart. They will see a God. They will see. They will see. They will see.
hill of the Lord. Say, up, up, up to the hill of the Lord. Say, up, up, up to the hill of the Lord. Hey, up, up, up to the hill of the Lord. Say, yeah, up, up, up to the hill of the Lord. That's where I go. Up, yeah, to the hill of the Lord. Up, 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 up to the hill of the Lord. for his goodness and his grace it is on his mountain in that place known as his holy hill that you and I will dwell. So Father, we just honor you for the word, even that which you release through the worship to prepare our hearts, Lord, to meet you for a time of encounter. We give you thanks, Lord God, even as it's written, that it is a good thing to give thanks. And so this afternoon, we give you thanks. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you for the privilege of serving you. The privilege of being known as a son and Lord for some and daughters for other of the true and living God. It's to you we look to. It's unto you we ascribe our worth, our value. All that pertains to who we are is because of you and you alone. And so we say that none receives and none is worthy of the glory but you, the true and living God. So as our hands are lifted, we glorify you. We bless you. We say, blessed be our God, our rock and our strength. Blessed be our king, the one whose throne is established in the heavens, and he rules over all, and he does it by his own power, his own might and strength. We bless you. And so we say, activate us, Lord, and cause our mountains in you to be made strong and create that place for us to dwell and abide in you. Take delight in us as your inheritance. And help us, O oh God, to be righteous representatives of you, the sovereign one, the only wise God, unto whom belongs majesty and dominion, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. We honor you. And we thank you, Lord, that it's upon the mountain we dwell. That it's upon the, on the mountain of the Lord we abide. Our habitation is in you. And for that, we give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, blessings to you, people of God. And thank you once again for allowing us to stream into your home. And uh, just to be a part of what God is doing in your life in this season. Uh, we're in an exciting series known as Mountain Dwellers. This will be our second teaching. And I got a great word for you. Still dealing with the aspect of valleys and the importance of discerning the nature of our valleys. And uh, what it is that you are conveying to us, conferring upon us, and parting into us by way of these valley experiences so that we will be properly fit to dwell on the mountains. So let's go for the word very quickly. Psalm 30, verses 6 through 8. The psalmist declares, and in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. I like that. Verse 7, Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Not only are you a mountain dweller, but God also has made you a mountain. And by God's favor, your mountain can stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried to the Lord, 
O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. You see, when God does things for us, he does them with eternity in mind. And when God makes you strong, when God liberates you, when God delivers you, it is done with the intent of being forever. And so even though things in the natural may be contrary, you can simply say, in my prosperity, I'll never be moved. Why? Because Jesus has fortified our prosperity. And his desire above all things is that we prosper, be in health, even as our soul prospers. And if you and I are going to be mountain dwellers and experience the strength of God where we can be strong in him, come up on our mountains, we've got to be a people who understand the importance of crying out to him at times and even yielding of our supplication to him that he in turn might manifest his nature. This is a God who cannot lie. Let's look at a few things here very quickly as it relates to uh, mountains once again. I want to give you some prophetic significance of mountains. Mountains prophetically signify uh, in the life of a believer uh, that, 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 that you're about to be catapulted into a place of destiny or they paint a picture of destiny moments and, and, and as a result of these destiny moments being activated by God, you can abide as a strong uh, pillar, a strong stable, uh, a staple, a strong just uh, earmark of, uh, of, of the ways of God in the earth realm. That's one aspect of a mountain is that anytime uh, there's a surge of significance that God is bringing to the earth realm, mountains serve as a catapult. For destiny moments. Mountains, once again, as we shared last week, are a place of elevation and strength. Mountains are also a place of increased visibility and influence. And then mountains uh, also symbolize a place or places and moments of distinction. Throughout the journey of every believer, as you mature, as you grow, as you matric and come through various processes ordained by God to make you, you will, you will see that there are certain times that you come into that can be captured as moments of distinction where God puts an eternal mark upon you that men could never take away from you. And, 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 and one aspect of mountains, once again, is that we've got to be able to discern the nature of our valley experiences and what God is conveying or communicating through times of being in valleys. Valleys uh, serve as a source uh, uh, from an indifferent perspective as depression, fear, loneliness, doubt, isolation, false visions, defeat, and even failure. And valleys also represent times or seasons in the believer's life where God is preparing them for promotion, for a time of elevation, where you'll come into a higher realm of authority, a higher realm of visibility, a higher realm of power, a higher realm of prominence, because your life in him, uh, God can use to really transact with the earth, and that makes you of tremendous importance. And uh, there are life lessons in every valley experience where wisdom, impartation, and even mantles of breakthrough consistent with your future will be activated in you. Sometimes in valley situations, God has to get you there for you to learn a life lesson, to get some wisdom. Because the next season of your life where you're going to dwell on a mountain is in the valley you learn how to give God your best, how to humble yourself, how to be broken but not destroyed, how to be not denied and not give up, how to, how to, how to be rejected by men but still operate as accepted in the beloved. And when you can navigate your valleys, these times of indifference, depression, Depression, fear, loneliness, you can rest assured that when you get promoted, you'll have some staying power. A lot of people can abort certain processes designed to make them, and then the rigors of the call, uh, the rigors, uh, uh, the, the various taxations that come when God brings you into a season of promotion. If you didn't steward the low place well, your tenure in the high place will be short lived at best. There's a temptation in valleys to abandon the activity of the valley, which could also lead to you forfeiting a time of reigning in the days to come. But we are not those people because we are part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and we're connected to a God whose word endures forever. Let's go to look at a few more valleys here. The Valley of Echco, which translates cluster. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 24 and 25. And they turned and went up into the mountain and came under the Valley of Echco and searched it out. And they took of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down unto us and brought us word again and said, it is a good land, which the Lord our God doth give us. You see, there are times when we got to visit 
this place known as the Valley of Eshcol, and here is cluster. And Isaiah prophesied something very interesting. He says, when they, there was a pitch of a cluster of grapes, and he began to prophesy, see that thou destroyeth it not, because there's a blessing found in it. In other words, the Valley of Eshcol is a place where we learn the importance of team ministry, and the power of being connected to the vine, and the power of being connected to our brother or our sister. Oftentimes, when God will bring us into a place of promise, a place of destiny moment, Moments, a place of divine appointments, a place of fulfillment, a place where he's going to really begin to increase us and enlarge our capacity. You cannot do it in the strength and your strength alone. It sometimes it's strength in numbers. There's a necessity to understand the power of a team and when you can function with a team and you don't need the attention to be put on you because you know that the blessing is in the cluster. It's the valley of Eshkel where God deals with selfishness. He deals with selfish ambition. He he deals with enemies of team ministry. He deals with destiny destroyers uh, that do not want to partner. Jesus sent us out two by two. Uh, and the days of the Lone Ranger over, and I'm convinced uh, that a lot of people uh, who bypass the Valley of Eshkola uh, do not have appreciation for team ministry. Uh, and sometimes it can be lonely at the top uh, when you forsook in the Valley of Eshkola uh, and don't understand the power of team ministry. Notice how in verse number 25 it says, and they took, uh, they took the fruit of the land in their hand and brought it down under us. Sometimes uh, the spoils can be so great you're going to need a, a support system. I, I prophesy that level of, of blessings, of bonanzas uh, and breakthrough coming into your life uh, just like Jesus when these fishermen were so discouraged. They were in the valley season. Uh, they had been out toiling in the waters all night. They came up empty, uh, zilch, bankrupt. They were broke, brother. And when Jesus showed up on the scenes, uh, they were so depressed. Why? Because they were in the valley. I'm a fisherman by trade. And I've been out here in these waters toiling all night. And I came up empty. Nothing has been caught in my net. And Jesus uh, uh, accesses their boat. There are times uh, when you're in valley situations, your boat represents your movement. Uh, God wants to become a part of your movement. Uh, you've been out there trying to do stuff, and he ain't been in the movement. Uh, but I prophesy that in this valley of Eshkel that Jesus uh, is going to show up in your movement. That is your boat. Uh, and then he, then, he, then he tells them, launch out a little bit from the land. He starts teaching, uh, and then he gives them a command, launch out into the deep. Uh, now I'm going to get involved in your mess for catching fish. And when I show up, I got some clusters. I got some bonanzas. I got some net breaking blessings I'm going to put on you because you allowed me to access your movement in the lowest place of your career and I gave you a charge and you honored my commands and all of a sudden these fishermen pulled up so many fish out of the water that it began to break their nets. And let me show you something. They had to start signaling for other boats to come because if they did not embrace team ministry networking. Uh, they would have went down with the blessing. Uh, and a lot of times folk want to hoard stuff to themselves uh, and act like they're the great wonder, the fourth part of the Godhead. Man, we don't need that goofy stuff uh, that's going to get me destroyed with you. Uh, we need some folk who understand the power of synergy, uh, the power of connectedness. Uh, we are body fitly joined together, compacted, every joint can supply. And sometimes it's in your valley moments. You realize who's with you and who's not with you. Uh, and when you have been a proponent of team ministry, uh, you will not miss out on accessing the good land. Uh, you will not miss out uh, on the good thing that God is going to do because the blessing uh, is in the cluster. May the valley of Eshkola uh, uh, render unto you everything eternity has ordained. Uh, and then there's the valley of Achor. Joshua chapter 7 verses 24 through 26. And Joshua and all, the, of Israel, all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his donkeys and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. I like that. Tell those devils, those spirits in your bloodline, those territorial powers, uh, this wicked demon of fear and panic and dread uh, and these powers of trepidation uh, that want to paralyze you and your faith uh, that have risen in this season because uh, of this demonic virus uh, that is in the land that has forced a lot of saints uh, to, to relinquish their authority, uh, to relinquish uh, their birthright. Uh, Jesus made you more than a conqueror. You need to realize that there's a time you got to uh, let God trouble what has been troubling you. Uh, and as John 
Joshua declared, the Lord shall trouble thee this day. Uh, and, and then it says, and all Israel stoned them with stones uh, and burned them with fire. My God. Uh, and after they stoned them with stones uh, and, and they raised over him a great heap of stones uh, unto this day. So the Lord turned uh, from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor under this day. I'm telling you, may eternity establish uh, some, some memorials for you. Uh, may the stones of eternity uh, come upon powers that have breached uh, your connection, uh, that have breached your body, uh, that have breached your finances. Uh, you know the story. Uh, there was a commandment given unto them uh, that when I caused the walls of Jericho to come down, uh, this is a first fruit offering for me. Everything inside of there belongs unto me. Don't you take anything uh, for yourself. Uh, you make sure that God gets everything. That's the principle of first things first that will activate a blessing for you and sometimes there are moments that God creates for saints well, you've been in a low place uh, and you ain't had nothing uh, and all of a sudden supernatural breakthrough comes uh, and the spirit of God will challenge you so it all give it all uh, I know we've been there we've done that uh, I remember when we, we at some 20 plus almost 30 years ago when we were buying our first home uh, we didn't know nothing about uh, 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 nothing when it came down to money we just had a vision from God uh, we were learning in our early 20s uh, and we, we had money and God told us give it all up uh, just sew it all and it's like you gotta be kidding me uh, I know this the devil I don't know too much about warfare but I know this can't be God. I thought you loved me. Uh, you know we've been broke. We've been going through hell. Uh, how you going to ask us to give all this? We were in a meeting uh, and we sold it by faith uh, and we didn't have the money to close the day before the close. And listen to me people of God. The real estate attorney did never met me, told me, uh, you sound like a great man. Don't worry about my pay. Uh, just see if you can come up with the down payment uh, and all you'll need to fulfill that. Uh, and then I had someone out of out of town uh, that called and said, listen, God put you on my heart uh, and, and I want to uh, sow into your life and sent the seed back then through Western Union. What no cash app, what no Zaya, what no quick pay, what no you can't send it through PayPal. Now I had to come through Western Union. And then God stirred the heart of a co-worker, stirred the heart of my mother-in-law, and they sold. And when we got to the closing the next day, we had every dime that we needed because we were willing to let go of something that we had in order to get something that belonged to us. Uh, but but Achan had an evil spirit. Uh, may God begin to expose every Achan in your life uh, that wants to hoard things uh, that belong to God, uh, that want to take stuff that belong to God. Uh, and sometimes these Achans can be spirits uh, that operate through people uh, that want to hoard who you are, that want to control who you are. You are God's first fruit. Uh, and may God bring these things to a time of encounter that what has been troubling you uh, is going to be troubled by God. Uh, I prophesy valley of Achor type of encounters coming over you child of God but that very thing that's been holding up your blessing that thing that's been hindering you from coming into the fullness of what God is within that's a fact in fact that's activated the anger of God towards you you need to know that God is not a man that he should lie and he declared that when his word is honored when his word is released there's nothing that's hidden from the eyes of God his word makes all things naked and when you enter gathering and you under the word of God the yoke of the word where the word is bringing light to entrance of it uh, brings light it gives an understanding uh, when it becomes a light to your pathway uh, and a light to, and a lamp to your feet you need to let that word do what it's going to do uh, he sends his word to heal uh, and deliver us from our destructions uh, his word has forever been settled in heaven uh, and he's exalted above his name uh, you need to know that the word is like a hammer that breaks uh, it's like fire that burns uh, you need to know that the testimonies uh, of the Lord's word they are sure they'll convert the simple uh, they'll bring you into a place of power you need to know that Jesus himself was the word made manifest. He was full of glory. He was full of grace and truth. And everything about his life brought judgment upon darkness. And I prophesy that thing that's been hidden in the foundations of your soul that is holding on to something that belonged to God. I prophesy a valley of acre type of encounter coming over you this day with the stones of Jehovah Sabaoth. And the burning of the Lord shall be loose against your adversaries. You better believe that in the name of Jesus. Ah, all of a sudden the people were tasked by God uh, stone them uh, in other words it wiped out a whole lineage uh, and I decree uh, that what has existed to this day uh, that has been your Achilles heel uh, what has existed to this day uh, that has been a satanic thorn uh, in your side constantly uh, coming uh, to vex you to harass you uh, that God by his sovereignty uh, through the valley of Acre experience uh, is going to get it out of your life the valley of Acre 
actually means trouble. Uh, it means disturbance. Uh, I prophesy supernatural troubling, uh, supernatural perplexities, uh, and divine disturbances uh, upon those powers uh, that are right in the camp, uh, that have buried stuff that belongs to God, uh, has tried to mar your identity, uh, try to hold your destiny hostage. Uh, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, uh, but you need to know that there are demons uh, that have been deployed against you uh, that know the potential in your bloodline uh, because hell has studied you. Uh, it's been in that bloodline uh, looking at potential uh, and looking at giftings uh, and seeking to sabotage, uh, wipe them out and abort them before they come uh, into the reality of Christ. Uh, but you are a born-again believer. You've been procreated from on high. You've been begotten of the Father. You are in a place of elevation. Uh, but yet something in the earth realm uh, wants to make your promotion. Uh, you mountain dweller where well, your mountain is no longer strong. Uh, but today God is judging uh, that spirit of Achan uh, and he's going to activate stones. Uh, may they be loose uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, to kill that lust, uh, to kill that destruction, uh, to kill that greed, uh, to kill that rejection uh, that wants to rise up uh, and when God looks at you uh, and you should be giving him everything, uh, rejection holds a part uh, of your identity captive. Uh, when you should be giving him everything uh, of previous indiscretion, uh, when you were abused and hurt uh, at the hands uh, of a person you trusted uh, to cover you and lead you uh, and as a result uh, your development has been arrested uh, to that pre previous place in life. Uh, today there's a purging coming. Uh, those stones and that fire is being loose uh, and God is going to liberate you. Uh, may the valley of Achor that activates the troubling uh, and the disturbances of God upon uh, that which is held captive. Uh, his inheritance be loose uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, here's another one. Joshua chapter 11 verses 8 through 10 and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel who smote them and chased them unto great Zidon unto Mizraphotame Jesus <laughs> and unto the valley of Mizva eastward and they smote them until they left them none remaining and Joshua did unto them as the Lord bade him and he hold their horses and burnt their chariots with fire. Jesus. Joshua was a real cutthroat. His name means sal Yahweh is salvation. And Joshua at that time uh, turned back and took Hazor and smote the king thereof with the sword. For Hazor before time was the head of all those kingdoms. Interestingly. He comes to a place called the Valley of Mizvah. And Mizvah actually translates watchtower. It's a place near a mountain called Hermon, which translates devoted. You, see, you, need, you need to see the devotion in the life of, of Joshua to execute to the poorness everything that God ascribed unto him. You see, I, I was preaching and dealing with this thing uh, uh, just recently about how sometimes uh, when, when offense hits a person's life, uh, it'll make them abandon devotion and dedication uh, and be driven by duty alone. Uh, but you need to know that duty does not require passion. Uh, that duty does not require any real commitment. Uh, that duty does not require focus uh, and with a deep sense of connectedness. Uh, but when you're devoted to God uh, and you got a life of dedication, brother, there's some passion. Uh, and can you imagine Joshua? He got hands laid on him uh, by the prophet Moses himself uh, and that mantle that was upon Moses uh, as a Shemar prophet uh, and as a deliverer of God's people hit Joshua one of these desert babies he was born uh, in transition uh, and he refused to die with his forefathers uh, he said no there's something significant about my life uh, because Yahweh is my salvation uh, and your Egyptian experience uh, is not my experience uh, I was born in transition uh, I saw God uh, minister substance by day uh, where food showed up every morning uh, I saw God uh, manifest fire by night uh, and be a cloud over us uh, during the day. I saw the glory of God come down uh, upon mountains uh, that begin to shake. Uh, I don't know about your experience in Egypt. Uh, I was born during a time uh, where transition uh, and God was manifesting miracles. Uh, I believe he can do anything uh, and he named me salvation uh, and I'm going to devote uh, my life to everything he's ordained uh, and there is coming uh, a manifestation uh, of elevation of your sight in the valley of Mizpah. You may be in a low place uh, but God has set your eyes on something big. Uh, 
You may be in a time where you've been beat down and trial after trial and loss after loss has hit you, but you refuse to give up on God. And he said, I'm going to take this valley of Mizpah and I'm going to open up your eyes like Jesus declared, say no longer four months and then the harvest. But I say unto you, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. You got to get in that valley of Mizpah, brother, where God deals with your sight in a low place and you can see a season coming and there's a devil in your way that has been defying God and is standing between you and your inheritance and everything that God has dedicated unto you. Everything you've been devoted unto God that you can execute it and you can see God begin to move by the power of God. Joshua smote them until he left nothing to remain. And I'm telling you, there's some people who have failed us in a previous season. They just didn't know any better. They were too busy trying to deal with their Egyptian experiences and them coming out of the world. But you were born in a supernatural kingdom. You were born into a supernatural movement. You were born in the movement where apostles and prophets were raised up by God with nations, with miracles and signs and wonders and deliverance and healing and miracles were norm. And you're in a season now called the Valley of Mizpah. And God is telling you, I'm about to put some distance between you and your background. I'm about to put some distance between you and those generational curses and these devils you see today you will see no more because I'm activating salvation in this valley of Mizpah and everything that has stood in your way it is coming under the sword of God that's why he declared his word will be a sword, a two-edged sword that comes out of your mouth. You got, there's an anointing coming upon your word. I prophesy that God will give you expertise and skill and laser-like precision with words to deal with things impeding momentum in your life. May momentum be built and may the power of the sovereign one come upon you. This valley situation in Mizpah, brother, is where the playing field is about to be leveled. Those ancestral curses, those kings of the earth, those powers I was programmed against your prosperity, against your success, against your health, against your mind, against your marriage, against your life, against your calling. He's about to hewn them down just like Joshua obeyed God because he was a devoted man. You're about to experience another level of breakthrough because this valley of Mizpah is opening up your eyes to things you've never seen before. I'm telling you, ain't nothing like having your eyes open by God. That's why Jesus declared uh, this people uh, they ain't able to come into the kingdom uh, because uh, having eyes they don't see uh, having ears they don't hear they can't discern me but you've been through uh, you've been born in the supernatural stuff uh, you've seen God heal the sick uh, you've seen miracles uh, you've saw demons scream out of people uh, you witnessed the power of God uh, you got saved uh, and your life was miraculously turned around uh, but yet this valley of Mizpah is designed uh, to open up your eyes for bigger to open up your eyes for greater I prophesy valley of Mizpah type of encounter for you in Jesus name let's look at another one we're going to bring this thing to a close uh, the valley of Baraka Baraka translates blessing there was a king named Jehoshaphat and Jehoshaphat was in a very interesting season of his life uh, where there were enemy combatants coming against him uh, to really dismantle his kingship uh, and in verse number 20 it says and they arose Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 uh, and, and they arose early in the morning uh, and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa and as they went forth Jehoshaphat stood and said hear me O Judah Ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. We need to be settled. May your affairs in God be settled. You are who you are by the grace of God. And no devil in hell uh, and no human on the earth can alter that. Uh, let it be settled in you. Be established in that. He says, believe his prophets. So shall you prosper. May the prophetic begin to surge in your life, in your local church, in your career, in your family, as you have never known before. You're going to prosper. That word prosper in the Hebrew literally means to break forth and to break out. It means to cross over to the other side. You see, you've been on one side of the blessing for too long, but there's something God is about to do for you in the valley of Berica that man could never do. There's a divine endorsement coming upon your life, and you're about to see the power and the goodness of God as you've never seen before. Look at this uh, in verse 21. And when he had consulted uh, with the people, 
He appointed singers. I like that. Ain't nothing like having a song for God to give you. Uh, one of them anthems and one of them memorial songs uh, that you can sing. Uh, it's just like McFadden and Whitehead, uh, River Chicago. You better get it in your spirit. Ain't no stopping us now. Uh, we are on the move. Uh, and I'm telling you, uh, you're getting your groove back. Uh, Stella, whatever you done lost, is coming back to you. Why? Because uh, you're about to go through the Valley of Barica. Uh, and there's something supernatural that's about to hit your life. Uh, he appointed singers uh, unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness and they went out before the army and to say praise the Lord for his mercy and do it. And then interestingly in verse 22 uh, and when they begin to sing uh, uh, the, uh, the praise the Lord sent ambushments uh, to the children of Amnon. Let me just jump on down very quickly uh, to verse number 26 uh, and the fourth day uh, they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Baraka unto this day. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. These verses are loaded with so much, but I want to tap into this very quickly concerning the Valley of Berica. They got so much spoil, it took them three days to bring in all they had because they obeyed the prophetic word of God uh, and they broke out of that situation of demonic threats uh, against their welfare. Jehoshaphat believed in God. Uh, he got established in victory and breakthrough uh, and then the prophets uh, and they begin to break forth in battle uh, and all of a sudden uh, God loosed an ambushment against their enemies. They ain't even have to fight. Uh, they just got a song in them. Uh, I declare the emerging of new songs coming upon the worship leaders all around the globe. Uh, songs that will activate victory and strength and power and that will bring you into your inheritance. Uh, but you need to know that valleys are also designed uh, to escort you into a realm uh, of preparation for your mountain moments. Uh, and I declare that momentum has been built over seasons of moments in your life uh, and God is about to earmark you, uh, your local church. Uh, he's about to do something in your business uh, in your family, in your mind, in your calling, but it's going to be by way of this Valley of Baraka. Baraka actually literally means uh, uh, an endorsement. It talks about the weakness of one being compensated by the strength of another. And so in this Valley of Blessing, uh, there's coming such an activation uh, where the power of God is going to hit your life uh, and you're going to be on a path of success uh, and everything you need by way of supply is going to hit your life uh, and efficiency is coming upon you. You're going to work like a whale oil machine. Why? That oil is the anointing of the Holy Ghost uh, and yokes uh, of your progression and yokes of your elevation uh, are about to be judged by the oil of God uh, and there's coming such an efficient flow uh, in your life and you'll know what it means to have sufficiency uh, in all things. Uh, I'm telling you, in Baraka, the blessing uh, is going to flow into your lives uh, and God is going to abuse it to break you forth uh, in the new places. Uh, it's just like the children of Israel under Moses. Uh, they were circling a mountain. Uh, they were in the same old place. Uh, but when that oil hit Joshua's life, uh, he was charged to take them into the future. And before you know it, brother, they broke out uh, of that wilderness pattern uh, and they started conquering new land uh, because the blessing came uh, upon that new administration uh, and upon your life because you have said, uh, I am not walking around in circles another day, devil. Uh, I'm not going to let religion and legalism from my background and some warped teaching hold me captive. I am blessed of the Lord. His blessing is upon my life and the blessing is going to activate some strength for you to rise out of one valley and to come into a mountain of inheritance where prosperity shall not be moved from your life and your mountain shall be made strong. The blessing is breaking in your life and Baraka is activating it. That valley, that low place where hell surrounded you, where hell thought they were going to level you uh, do your praise, uh, ambushments are coming, uh, do your thanksgiving uh, divine ambushments are coming upon devils uh, who would ever thought you can rise and sing a song uh, and heaven would be stirred uh, and Jesus the great deliverer of the ages uh, would join in and sing a song uh, of deliverance over you you need to know uh, whatever we do in heaven uh, is going to, on earth is going to be confirmed in heaven uh, and when we begin to sing songs of victory uh, and begin to talk about God's mercy uh, and God's goodness saints, uh, this is when you cause uh, your valley to be elevated uh, and that blessing is coming uh, into that low place today uh, you will never see it again why because the blessing uh, is shifting your nature and it is refining your character and you're going to rise in God uh, and there is coming supernatural gains uh, there is coming divine dividends uh, and the blessing is also filled in your faith uh, some of you say I don't know if God going to do it uh, I don't know if it's going to happen you hush your mouth uh, today is a day uh, where the blessing comes in uh, and stops the mouth uh, of the doubter 
dollars and shuts down the mouth of the unbelievers and it shuts down the flow of toxic stuff in your life. Today is a day where power comes upon the saints. In Baraka, brother, that blessing is coming and it's going to be fuel for your faith and it's putting a demand on heaven to loose abundance and to activate surplus. I prophesy this over you, Rivers Chicago. I prophesy over Rivers Dallas. I prophesy over Rivers Muskegon and Rivers Richmond. I prophesy into your life. The Baraka is being loose and this valley where hell thought you were going to be slaughtered. You're going to rise. It's going to take days to carry away the blessing of God. It's going You're going to need some help. You're going to need some trucks. You're going to need some ships. You're going to need just like in the natural when these ships come with cargo from foreign lands to exchange goods for our money. I decree that the blessing of God will be like a massive fleet of cargo ships. You'll have so much coming into your life. You won't know what to do with it. May you believe God and be established and may you trust the prophets of God in your life and may you prosper. I prophesy supernatural activity in your valley of Baraka. Ah, in the name of Jesus. Well, right there where you had saints in your home, stand on your feet. I bless you this afternoon. I declare the release of that which heaven has ordained comes upon you. This day, June 14th, 2020, you will know the goodness of God. Unusual activity in the area of blessing comes upon you. Father, I thank you for the saints of God. Let every Lord God manifestation of Baraka prevail for the righteous. That which you desire to do through Mitzvah and Acor and Eshko. Let these things come into our lives in an abundance. I declare that. In Jesus' name. And I declare wisdom for valley situations. I declare supernatural understanding for valleys. You'll not despise them because you're a mountain dweller. And that your valley moments will serve as an escort to mountaintop activity. Rise in strength. Rise in power. May your mountain be made strong by the hand of God. I bless and speak grace over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, saints. We are so delighted that we are able to come and share the word of the Lord with you. I trust that God has said something to activate your mountain and to put desire in you to rise and stand strong and to also stand and see his salvation. We honor God for you, your family, your household. As we're coming out of this season and we're seeing a sense of normalcy be restored, our God is doing something new. Get on board, become a part of it, embrace it, and trust him. I thank God for you, uh, our partners. I thank God for all of our Rivers churches, Rivers members, and that, with that dynamic thing that God is doing in you and through you. Be encouraged and know that the mountaintop is where you belong and that the mountaintop is where you shall dwell. God bless you. Until next time, strength and honor unto you. All the information to connect with our ministry, uh, to sow into the ministry, just to be involved in what we're doing will be made available for you immediately after my voice is silenced. So God bless once again and great grace be upon you. Rivers Chicago would like to thank our members, partners, and friends who sow into the work of building the house of prayer. We trust that this is good soil and pray that fruit is abounding to your account. We need you to stay tuned as we are about to give electronically. You can do this via Zelle, Cash App, Text to Give, and you can also send your checks to our P.O. Box. All of our platforms are on the screen. I'd like at this time if you would hold your seat for the Lord and help me confess corporately. You ready? Let's go. Father, we declare that you alone are the source for River Chicago and our partners around the globe. We decree you provide all we need above and beyond. We confess the consistent flow of finances. They come into these houses and we decree that you multiply every seed that's sown into rivers. We decree you are the God of supply in every need that's present and before us. You are supplying through the power of seed sown into this ministry. Lord, we confess that you are causing all grace to abound towards us, and abundance is our portion. We prophesy large amounts of finances are deposited into Rivers Accounts weekly, and we decree that every financial endeavor of God's people are met above and beyond. We decree phenomenal returns come to us as we adhere to the biblical principles of giving and sowing into the work of the kingdom. 
We decree the financial seeds we've sown to the nations, to the disenfranchised, to the poor, to the needy. They come to us again multiplied. We decree that we are satisfied with favor and we are full of the blessing of the Lord. We decree excellence and stewardship over our membership, friends, and partners around the globe. And we decree increase on all finances that come unto us. We declare rivers is a place of perpetual supernatural harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, we want to thank you for being a part of our online worship experience. Have a phenomenal week and we'll be back with you real soon. Kingdom blessings.